Hi, boys and girls. Today, as we begin our lesson, I would like you to pretend that you are here at church with me. And we've been coloring and uh, using the crayons back here, and you got distracted and went to play with some of the toys. Well, after a while, I knew that parents would be coming back, and I say to you, please come and put the crayons away. And so, because you are all obedient children, you come right away with a happy heart, and you do this. Put the crayons in the box, and they're so nice and neat, and you fold it up like this. And then you say, I'm done. Well, I want you to think about that. Are you really done? Did you put the crayons away if you leave them on the table? Well, no, because is that where we store the crayons at church? No, we don't store them on the table. We store them in the cabinet. So you did half the command. You did part of it. You did actually put them away in the box, but you didn't put them away in the cabinet. And so maybe you didn't understand or maybe you didn't know that we kept the crayons in the cabinet, and so you didn't know to do that second part of the command. Well, today we are going to look at a command from Scripture. And, you know, it's sometimes that way with God's commands. We uh, sometimes know part of what that command is, but we don't know all of it. So right now what I would like you to do is get out your banner piece that um, we're going to be talking about Exodus um, chapter 20, verse 15, that says, you shall not steal. And you're probably thinking, oh, that's an easy one. I've got that. And I, I'm not, I don't take things that don't belong to me. I'm good. Um, well, I would like to present to you that perhaps you haven't thought about all of the command. And so we're going to look at um, some parts of the New Testament to help us understand the full command of what it means to not steal. Um, so I'd like you to go ahead and put your banner piece on right now and get your Bible and make sure you have listening ears and a happy heart and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we love you. We know that we don't know everything and we need you to help us to understand. So would you please guide my mouth today and help our uh, minds to understand and comprehend what you would have us to learn and to then put it into practice and be obedient uh, to you. Uh, Lord, I do ask that you would draw each child listening um, today, that you would draw them to yourself and help them to recognize that they need a relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, the Eighth Commandment says, you shall not steal. I would like you to look at your Bibles, turn to the New Testament in Luke chapter 19, and you're going to politely ask your grown-up to read this with you, and then you have some questions to answer. So go ahead and do that right now. It is, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's not Luke 19. It is actually Luke 18, 18. And it is about um, a man, we don't know his name, but he is called the rich young ruler. So go ahead and do that now. It is discussion 9A. The rich young ruler um, asked how he could inherit eternal life. And he thought that he could have that just by doing everything just right. But interestingly enough, Jesus addresses his heart. Um, he, he says to him, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor. Um, God knew, Jesus knew that the rich young ruler loved his things. He loved money more than he loved God. And so Jesus was telling him to sell everything um, because that would have shown um, that his heart was willing to follow God instead. 
Now I would like you to, um, with your grown-up, look at Luke 19, and this is actually um, a different man. His name is Zacchaeus. So go ahead and uh, do discussion 9b, and then we're going to talk about the two men, uh, their situations, and their responses to Jesus and how they're different. So go ahead and do that right now. All right, so Zacchaeus is actually a very interesting person. He was a tax collector, and maybe you already know this. You probably discussed it as families. Um, but tax collectors were not liked in, um, in Israel, and it's because they, they took things that didn't belong to them. So um, they collected taxes for the government, and what they would do, Zacchaeus, if... Um, he came to me, he uh, and I owed to the government $10. He might charge me $20 and give the 10 to the government and keep 10 for himself. So that's what tax collectors sometimes did, and they were not known for being honest. So um, when Jesus comes to Zacchaeus and he says, I'm going to go to your house, that's why the people are upset and angry. And um, so when Jesus goes to his house, and I don't know what happened there, the Bible is not specific, but whatever Jesus said, whatever happened there at his house, Zacchaeus responds by saying, uh, let's look at that in the scripture, verse 8, he says, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will restore it fourfold. So what Zacchaeus was saying is, if I've taken something from somebody, if I took $1 from, uh, from them and kept it for myself, I'm actually going to give them back $4. So fourfold, four times the amount that I stole. If he took $2, he would give them back eight dollars. So you see he's going to pay back more than he took from those people. The greed that was in his heart before he met Jesus was changed into love for Jesus. So he no longer loved the money but now he loved Jesus and he was willing to give more than he had taken to show his love for Jesus. Now, this goes back to um, a command back in the Old Testament in Exodus 22, verse 1, and it says, If a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen for one ox and four sheep for one sheep. So you can see that Zacchaeus was trying to go was was going back to the Old Testament and um, obeying, and he. Do you think he was doing this because he had to? What are your thoughts on that? You can talk about it, or you can yell it out to the screen. No, he didn't do this because he had to. He did this because he now wanted to. Because now he was a changed man. His darkened heart had been changed by Jesus. All right. Is um, taking something that doesn't belong to you the only way of stealing? Well, let's talk about that. Let's say that you went to the store and you wanted to buy some candy. And have we were just at the beach and there is this candy store and you can actually fill up a bag and then... It says it's like $6 a pound or something like that. Well, let's pretend that you want to get a half a cup. And the sign says that a half a cup of candy is $2. So the person behind the counter uh, fills up a half a cup and pours it in the back. And you pay your $2 and you go home. Now, when you get home, you're just curious, and so you get your mom's half cup, and you measure out your candy. Uh, there is a problem. 
Is that a full up to the half cup line? No, it's not. There's, it's like half of a half. Good grief. You, how would you feel? Would you feel cheated? Like you didn't get your money's worth? This is not $2 worth, that's only $1 worth, or something like that. Yeah, you might feel indignant, like, oh, I can't believe they did that to me. Well, this actually, the first cup that I used, wasn't a half cup measure. It was a one-third cup measure, and that is less than a half. And so if the candy store owner used a third cup, but said it was a half cup, then they would be cheating you out of the candy that you paid for. Well, the Bible talks about this too. So I'd like you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25. Let's get our Bibles out. Chapter 25 verses 13 through 16 and we're going to I'm going to read it and you can follow along so if it's gonna take you a little bit just pause the video find the verse and then we'll keep going okay it says you shall not have in your bag two kinds of weights a large one and a small one you shall not have in your house two different kinds of measures a large and a small a full fair weight you shall have. So that's one fair weight you shall have. A full and fair measure you shall have. That's one correct measure. That your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. For all who do such things, all who act dishonestly, are an abomination to the Lord your God. Wow. So if we are dishonest, um, or we cheat, or steal, then we have been an, an abomination to God. And that's a really big word. Um, but God abhors, he hates when we disobey his commands. He set these things in place for us for a reason. Um, and when we disobey the commands... Um, it actually shows that our hearts are ugly and wicked and you have a picture on your chart of a dark heart of a black heart so that's um, to remind us that when we do not keep God's commands it shows us that we have an ugly heart all right could you please um, get your grown-up and I would like you to discuss, read and discuss the verses Psalm 37 21 and Ephesians 4 28 and then come back to me. All right, I love Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is amazing. Um, it's sad to me that we only read one verse, so maybe if you and your families want to, you can read the whole book of Ephesians. I just love it. Um, the first three chapters talk about what Jesus does for the person who believes in Jesus to take away their sins. And the last three chapters, chapters four, five, and six, talk about um, those who claim to be Christians. This is how God expects you to behave to be more like Christ. This is what it looks like. And so that's where you find yourself as you're reading chapter 4 verse 28. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So God wants us to work hard um, for the things that we have. Work is good. Um, it is a blessing to work, the scriptures tell us. And everything that we have comes from God. So boys and girls, I want you to think about something. Is the action of stealing, taking something that doesn't belong to you, cheating somebody out of money, um, cheating somebody in a game, is 
that the only way that we can break the commandment? If you said no, you are right. Because Jesus deals with the heart. He dealt with the heart um, with the rich young ruler. In the rich young ruler, he loved his things more than he loved God. And he dealt with Zacchaeus' heart, um, with Zacchaeus taking, and Zacchaeus recognized that, and he actually responded much differently than the rich young ruler. And I want to go back to that just really quickly. Um, listen to this. The rich young ruler, when Jesus told him to sell everything, became very sad, for he was extremely rich. And then Jesus looked at him with sadness and said, How difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Because Jesus knew that when you love things more than you love God, it is difficult to give that over and to love God more. It's not impossible because God can do anything in a person's heart. But listen to this. Zacchaeus, when he heard from Jesus, Zacchaeus said, I'm going to... I'm going to pay back. I'm going to give back. Zacchaeus' heart was much different in response to Jesus than the rich young ruler. And listen to how Jesus responded. He said, Today salvation has come to this house. Jesus knew the heart of each man, and he knew by the way each person, each man responded what had transpired, what had gone on deep inside that person. Did you know that, well, we've talked about this before, about how um, we don't just decide to break the commandment, that it starts in our minds. It starts inside of us first. And so what comes before the stealing action is actually greed. We're, we're greedy. We want more than we have. Uh, we might be lazy. We might not want to work for what we want. We might just want to take it. And so laziness um, is an attitude of the heart that then would sometimes cause, well, would cause a person to steal. Not being, um, not feeling thankful. If we don't feel thankful for what we have and we, we feel discontent, we're, we're just not content with what we have. We want more, um, it, we might be rebelling in our hearts against what we've been told that we can or cannot have. And all of these attitudes, all of these feelings are a warning sign. Remember we talked about that before. Um, for um, the, the action that's about to, to come, which is stealing. But you know at the root of all these attitudes, the things that are going on in here and in here, the root of that, the very bottom, is actually unbelief. And you might be saying, Miss Angela, how on earth is unbelief related to stealing? Well, let me show you. In my classroom today, I have Vinny, Vinny the monkey, and I have Reba the pig, and I am going to give them each some markers. Now, Vinny, you may have two markers, and Reba, you may actually have five markers to work with today. Well, Vinny is unhappy with his two markers, and he thinks, that's not fair. I only give two markers, and she gets five. I want hers. And I say, if you want more markers, then you need to work for them. Well, Vinny is complaining, and he is grumping. And you know, when he does that, when his heart attitude is complaining and grumping about what he's been given because he thinks that he should have been given more markers, it's as if he's saying about me, his teacher, Miss Angela, you didn't give me the right amount of markers. You don't know what you're doing. You made a mistake, Miss Angela. Miss Angela, you don't have the right to give uh, markers in the um, 
markers to whomever you want. You have to give them to us evenly. Do you see how he doesn't trust me that what I gave him was good for him? Well, boys and girls, I'm going to put Reba and Vinny aside. Sometimes kids and grown-ups do the exact same thing. We might look at our things, um, and I have a very nice house, um, and you do too. God has given you a house over your head, but maybe you have to share a room with your brother or sister, and you think, oh, I wish I didn't have to share a room with my brother or sister. I wish I had my own room. That would be so much better. And you're grumbling and complaining because you have to share a room. Well, I know what that's like. I had to share a room with my sister my whole life until I went to college. And then I shared with a roommate. And then I got married. And I shared with Pastor Sam because we're married. So that grumbling is actually not being thankful to God and not believing that what he's given you and your family is for you your good and for the best, and it is enough for you. Um, is it okay to ask him for more with a happy heart? Yes, but you do need to realize that he might say, no, what you have is good enough. What you have is enough for you. Um, we need to be very careful um, about our the attitudes of our heart and when those things start coming, when we feel jealous that maybe somebody has a nicer bicycle than we do, or a doll that we've seen on TV and we really wanted that doll, or that Shopkins, or um, uh, a stuffed animal, or a spy gear, and we want that so much that we start feeling complaining. Well, we need to be very careful. Remember we talked before that those emotions that we feel are sometimes a warning, a warn us that the bad action is coming. But boys and girls, those, um, those heart attitudes, they are also sin. And uh, we need to confess that as sin and ask Jesus to forgive us and uh, to clean our darkened hearts. He is the only one that can clean our darkened hearts. He is the only one who keeps the commandments perfectly. And I don't ever want you to get tired of hearing that. Even grown-ups need to hear it. I'm going to tell you that even Miss Angela has to confess her sins all the time. And Jesus is faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we are thankful for these commands from the Old Testament and how they show us that even on our best day, we have broken at least one of your commands. Because even by thinking that we have kept them is actually lying to ourselves. It's becoming prideful. It's putting ourselves on the throne instead of having God on the throne. And Lord, uh, that shows us that we cannot stand before you. We are sinful and we need someone to uh, be perfect in our place. Thank you, Jesus, for being that person. Lord, I ask that you would draw each child to yourself, that you would help them to recognize that uh, they need you because their hearts are darkened without you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I look forward to seeing each of you at church. Bye-bye.